So you were trained on the Panasonic HD camera, but that was five weeks ago and you need to film by yourself tomorrow. Well, this video is a refresher on some of the key points of the Panasonic HD camera. This is not meant to replace an in-person training. It is simply meant to refresh your memory on some of the key points. Inserting the battery. To insert the battery, make sure the divots on the bottom of the battery are lined up with the teeth on the bottom back of the camera. Hold the battery flat to the back of the camera and then slide it down. To remove the battery, always use the battery release button. Turn the camera on. With your right thumb, hold down the little white button next to the record button and turn the button to on. Manual settings. Before you do anything else, set the camera to manual. You won't have full control of your camera's operation unless you do this. Set your camera to HD settings. Hit the menu button and toggle to recording setup. This will allow you to select the settings you want to use. Just because this is an HD camera does not mean that you have to shoot in HD. So be sure to set your camera settings before you begin. Remember your SD card. This camera films with SD cards. Your card needs to be at least class six or higher. If your card is less than class four, it won't record your footage. We recommend buying a 16 gigabyte card. This camera records onto the SD card. So if you don't have a card, you cannot record. The SD card is inserted into the back of the camera. Carefully lift up the viewfinder. Again, you never want to force open the door. See this arrow? Push the door the way the arrow indicates and you'll see that it opens easily. Insert the card with the label facing up and the teeth facing down. Click it to insert it fully. Then carefully close the door and lower the viewfinder again. Initialize or format the SD card. Format the card, go into the menu and choose card functions, then card format, and then select yes. Wait a moment while the card format. Be aware that initializing a card means wiping out everything that is on that card. So if you have media that is not transferred and saved somewhere else, or if your filming partner has media that is not saved somewhere else, then you may not want to initialize your card. Focus. To focus, make sure your camera is set to manual focus and not autofocus. You focus by turning this ring while looking through the viewfinder or the LCD screen to see your image. Use the focus assist button, which is located here. This will digitally zoom you into that image so that you can see it better and get better focus. Be aware that this is a function on the camera that lets you see the image better. This is not what the camera is recording. This is just a tool to help you get the image in focus. When you have the focus assist on, you will see a little button on your screen that says expand it. Make sure you turn focus assist off before you shoot. Zoom. This dial next to the focus ring is your zoom. Use this to create your composition. This switch gives you two options, servo or manual. The ring is the manual zoom. The servo zoom is here, where your pointer finger and middle finger on your right hand are. The camera can be set to either one, but not both at the same time. So if you try to use the servo zoom and it does not work, you're probably set to manual. If you try to turn the ring and it does not work, don't force it. You're probably set to servo. Simply change the settings and then you can use the manual zoom. Exposure. To set exposure on your camera, hit the iris button. You'll see that when you hit the button, you can toggle between manual iris and auto iris. You want to be in manual iris. When you are in manual iris, you can use this ring, your exposure ring, to change your exposure. In your viewfinder or on your LCD screen, you should see the f-stops changing to allow more or less light into the camera. White balance. White balance means telling the camera what white is in a given lighting situation. When the camera knows what pure copy paper white is, it can set all of the other colors for you. It is especially important to set your white balance in each new lighting situation. You can use white balance presets or you can set it yourself. To set it yourself, set this white balance knob to either A or B. Now set up a shot in the light source that you are using. Have someone hold up a piece of paper in that light source and zoom in so that the camera screen sees only white. Hit the white balance button which is located here under the camera lens. You only need to hit it once. 
and you will see the screen say white balance setting and then white balance OK. That's all you need to do. If the, if the camera says either level over or level under, that means it is either too dark or too bright to film. So change your exposure using either the exposure ring or the neutral density filters or by adding more light to the room and try it again. Neutral density filters. Neutral density filters are built into this camera. Each filter cuts out a stop of light. So if you are filming and it is too bright to open your aperture to an F2 and get that nice depth of field you are trying for, try using a neutral density filter to help you. And if you don't need them, just turn them off. Shutter speed. When you pop out the LCD screen, you'll see a whole bunch of buttons. At the top, you'll see shutter speed. Hit shutter to toggle between auto shutter and manual shutter. Go to manual shutter and set your settings to 148. If you are shooting in 24p, 148 is the correct setting. To record. When you are ready to record your image, hit the red record button by your thumb. The display will show that you are recording. When you are ready to stop recording, simply hit the red button again. Playback. To playback your video in the camera, hit the PB or playback mode at the back of the camera. That's this little button to the left of the battery on the back side of the camera. This will allow you to playback your videos. Depth of field. This camera has an excellent lens that allows you to film with a shallow depth of field or deep depth of field. A shallow depth of field means that one plane of the image is in focus and one plane is not. To achieve a shallow depth of field effect, open your aperture all the way. Try filming around F2. If filming at F2 causes your image to overexpose, try using the neutral density filter to help you get a good exposure. Deep depth of field, which is also called deep focus, means that all planes of your image are in focus. To achieve this, close your aperture down. Try filming around F9. Again, you will need to stage your composition in depth to make this work, which is to say you will need to have a foreground, middle ground, and background in your shot. For more information about working with depth of field, the Filmmaker's Handbook is an excellent resource and it is on reserve in the library for Film 4120 Production 1. Lens Capabilities, Wide Angle Lens or Long Lens. When you zoom the lens all the way out, you are not just zooming out, you are also using the wide angle lens capabilities of the camera. This effect can create an interesting perspective that appears to be distorted. When you zoom the lens all the way in, you are not just zooming in, you are also using the long lens capabilities of this lens. This creates a flatness in the image. The foreground, middle ground, and background planes are not exaggerated as they are with the wide angle lens, but rather they appear to be compressed. Working with the wide angle lens effect or the long lens effect can create very different aesthetic images. You might try filming the same object two ways, once with the wide angle lens and once with the long lens, to really explore the ways you can use the same zoom lens to create different visual effects. Again, for more information, the Filmmaker's Handbook is an excellent resource and is on reserve for you in the library. Getting your footage onto your computer. When you are finished filming, take out the SD card. Use a USB card reader to plug your SD card into the computer. If anything goes wrong, contact your instructor or return to the checkout room. We're all here to help you make the best video you can. Good luck with your shoot.